C Sharp 11 is just around the corner, and we're going to look at some of the features that can be used in .NET 7. Remember to hit the red subscribe button, or go to youtube.com slash roundthecode to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out our .NET 6 course on dependency injection, a must for software developers. Visit roundthecode.com slash courses. At time of recording, C Sharp 11 is in preview and is due to be released alongside .NET 7 in November 2022. To use the features in this video, you must have Visual Studio 2022 version 17.3.0 or above. If .NET 7 is still in preview when you're watching this, you'll need to enable previews for the .NET SDK. You can do that by going to Tools and Options. If you go into Environment, Preview Features, make sure that Use Previews of the .NET SDK is ticked. As well as that, you'll need to download the .NET 7 SDK. You might already find that Visual Studio 2022 has installed it for you, but if it hasn't, you just need to search for it. Go onto this page here, and you can download the SDK. Also make sure in your CSproj file that the Lang version is set to Preview. This will allow you to use C Sharp 11 when it's in Preview. The first feature we're going to have a look at is Required Members. Now in a class, what you can do with a property is you can set the required modifier. When you do that, when this object is initialized, the name has to be set, otherwise it will throw a compile error. I can demonstrate this in a console application. So we're going to create a new instance of required member. Now if we were to leave it like that, we get a compiled error, as you can see. However, we can go ahead and set the name of Dave and the error disappears. Now we're going to go ahead and set it in a constructor. So we're going to pass that parameter in into the constructor and set it within it. So we do that by calling name equals name like that. Now, if we use the constructor to initialize the object and we pass in the name as a parameter, we're still getting the error. The attribute in question is called sets required members, and we need to bring in the namespace for it as well. If we go back to our console application now, we can see that the compile error has disappeared. Auto default struts is the next feature we'll look at. Now in C Sharp 10, if a struct has a constructor, we'd have to set the properties within it. If we don't, we get this compile error here. So in order to fix this, we'd have to set a number with a value, so we could set it as zero. However, in .NET 7, we don't need to do that. If a property isn't set, it will be set as its default value. In this instance, the number would be set to zero, like how a class works. Next, we'll look at raw string literals. This is ideal if you're using a markup language that's got quotes like JSON or XML. What we've done is we've wrapped this string around with three quotes. What this does is if a string's got a quote in it, it will see it as part of the string. In previous features of C-sharp, we'd have to escape it with a backslash. We've also got these two dollars here. Now this is good if we're including a variable within our string. So these two dollars represents the number of curly braces that we need to include to reference our variable. If we were to only have one brace there, it would include it as part of the string. We can also include additional dollars as well. So now this becomes part of the string, this my number. If we want to reference it as a variable, we'd have to add an extra curly brace into it. Generic attributes is the next feature. Now what we've got up here is we've got an attribute that has a generic type. What we can do with this attribute is we can use it as part of an attribute within a class. So we need to make sure that this is a fully constructed type as the attribute. If we were to add a generic type in there, it would throw a compile error. It needs to be a fully constructed type. List patterns is the final feature we'll look at. What this does is it allows us to compare the values within either an array or a list. What this is doing is in this method here, it's passing in an integer array of my numbers and it's doing a comparison, making sure that the sequence is one, three, and five. We can try that out in a console application. So we passed in the array there. If we run it now, it should return true, which it does. 
If we were to change the order or change the numbers within it or increase the length, it will go ahead and return false. What we can also do is we can add an underscore. When we add an underscore, the number can be whatever we want it to be. So in this instance here, we need to check and make sure that the first number is one, the last number is five, but the middle number can be anything that we want it to be. It still needs to be a length of three. So we can go ahead and test that once again in our console application. So we're going to call that method. So we can have it one, four and five, and that will go ahead and return true for us when we run it. And we can demonstrate that being any value that we want. So we've changed it to two and it's still returning true. If we were to increase the length though, and go ahead and run it. It goes ahead and returns false. We can also add two dots. When we add two dots, the sequence can be zero or more and the values can be anything within them. In this instance, the first index has to have a value of one and the last index has to have a value of five, but it can have anything in between. So we go ahead and demonstrate that in our console application. So we use that method. And if we were to run that, we can see that the first index has a value of one, the last index has a value of five. So it should return true. And we can do that. We can wipe out the first two and only have two in there. And again, still returning true. It's only if we change the first index value or the last index value that that would return false. And we can also do it so it's greater than five in this instance. So in this instance, we've got the first index value of one. It can be anything in between. And the last one is going to be five or more. And demonstrating that in our console application, this will return true with one and five. And also if we added six in there, that would also go ahead and return true. And we can have anything in the middle. So we'll put a few more values within that. And once again, that is returning true. Download and use the C-Sharp 11 sample used in this video by going to roundthecode.com slash .net hyphen samples. Also let us know in the YouTube comments what feature you're looking forward to the most in C-Sharp 11. Thanks very much for watching and hit a like on the video.